Hello friends. So today we can discuss a topic from the CP algorithm website binary exponentiation. So I have already made a video on binary exponentiation, which is this video. I will link the video like title and the description link in the description of this video. So you can first check this video out and understand what is binary or modular arithmetics or binary exponentiation. So this is actually modular arithmetic, but there is also one video on my channel, which is based on uh, like binary like automatics if you go on the playlist side and then if you go to okay just wait I will search it combinatorics playlist and then you'll go to this NCR uh, okay this implementation of like X N mod D like okay if this video this video is also good so you have to first understand this modular arithmetic and also this implementation of x to the power of n mod d. If you understand both of these video, these are sufficient to understand binary exponentiation. This video is actually the binary exponentiation. So I will link both of these video down in the description. If you understand this video, then actually uh, this site has uh, some problems down in the description, practice problems. So I'm actually solving this code forces problem and this pause problem, these two problems in this video. So let's start. The first problem is the parking lot problem from code forces. It states that you can read the problem statement, but in simple terms, it states that you are given some N and in like there is some IT company which has some parking slots. Okay. So the parking slot number is two and minus two parking slots. And now you have four types of cars. Okay. Now you want to place these cars in this parking lot such that N successive cars are of the same type. Okay, now you have to determine how many number of ways are there. I'll understand you more with this example. So let's understand it more. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think so. It should be right. Yeah. So as you can see, if there are some parking slot, so if n is equal to let's assume three. Okay. So two n minus two which is equal to if you put this here, so three, six minus two, which is four. So which means that there are four slots now. Okay. So this is a number of slots available in the parking and number of cars available are four. It is always four. So there are four types of car always. So now let's assume the car name are A, B, C and D. Okay. Now you have to place the cars in this slot such that three cars should be adjacent or like are of the same type and they should be together successive cars. So it means that you can put it like this A, 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 and then you can put anything here, which is B, or you can put C, you can put D or anything, or you can also put it like this, which is like A, 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 and then B, and then C and D and so on. Okay. So this is the problem. First problem, like this is the pro part of the problem. You have to determine how many number of ways are there. Now the next part or the thing you can understand from this example is, if uh, let's assume that I have some okay, why well, this go? Right. Yeah. So like if I have let's assume two n, so can there are two successive n cars, which means that if I put n successive cars here, will there be another n successive cars again here? So as you can see, if we are given n and we want n consecutive cars to be placed of the same type. And the number of slots are 2n, uh, 2n minus 2. So let's assume that I have 2n minus 2 slots. And now if I want to somehow place n cars, so I will minus n from it. So it will become n minus 2, which means that it is less than n. So if we put a consecutive slot of cars of same type of size n, then the remaining slots are n minus two, which is less than n. So it means that the like it cannot happen that two slots of like cars of the same type appears. So it can only appear once. I hope you understand my point first point. So the following cases can be the cases can be let's assume that these are the number of slots. Uh, the it can happen that the n conjugative cars start from the first end, end at some point, and then you have to fill the remaining cars or else the the slot the consecutive cars end at this point and like these are the n consecutive cars of the same time or it is in middle some somewhat the n cars in the middle i hope these are the three ways so now for the first part 
let's assume that I have to place the n cars of the same type here. So if I want to place n cars of the same type here, how many cars I have to place? Like how many options I have? I have four options. So like four options I have. So all the cars will be of the same type, but options are four. Okay. So now four into now for the next part, just after this n consecutive cars, I have to put some other car because if I put the same car here, then it will be difficult because I want to put some other car. So let's assume I put a all the n cars of type a so it should not be a again it should be like b c or d because i only want n consecutive cars of the same type so now for this i have three options left okay so now the first option i have four options for the second option i have three and for the remaining how many remaining are there so as you can see the there are two and minus two total okay minus i have minus n cars and i have also minus one car because i placed this so how many cars are left n because this and this is cut so n minus three cars are left so for the remaining n minus three cars i have four options because i can put any car there because it will not form a consecutive of four like consecutive of n cars so i i have always have four chances so four to the power of n minus three and that's the option for the part in which i have the like uh, as you can see this interval of same cars starting from the first point okay if this happened on this like if this happened in the last part in which like this is the last interval okay then it is uh, like this is also same that i have to put four cars here then the, like, this next part is of three types and then there are again four to the power of n minus three options okay so but now if there is an option in which i have to place the interval in somewhere between so now i have four options for this interval but now i have to put three cars i have three options for this into this side and three options for this side and now how many cars are remaining the uh, because I, now i have two places which i have used so four like uh, n minus four positions are left okay so yeah just have to minus out two n minus two minus two so it will be n minus four so for all those n minus four positions i have four options so these are the options and how many positions are this so as you can see these are the positions for the first interval so how many intervals are there as you can see the two intervals the starting and the ending interval are used okay so as you can see the two intervals are used and how many intervals are left so in the total n minus three intervals are left so you just have to multiply these options in which like you have to multiply two into this part four into three into four to the power n minus three plus n minus three plus four to the power of n minus four into four into three into three and that's the whole logic for this problem you just have to do this so as you can see this is n to power four so you have to do binary exponentiation in this okay so it's just that you have to like by an exponentiation if you understand the video you will uh, like easily understand in which we calculate a to power of b in log n time okay sorry so yeah you can do that uh, also in this case n is i think so pretty small uh, oh sorry in this n is pretty small so like you can also what you can do that because you always are only finding out 4 to power of n Okay, and n is small, like up to 50. So this maximum value can be up to 4 to the power 50. So you can easily calculate out like 4 to the power till 50 in log n, like O of n. In which like calculate 4 to the power 1, 4 to the power 3, 4 to the power 4 and so on. Just 50 countings you have to do. And then for all the like answers, you can easily do that in O of 1. Or else because you, you because if there is a number of test case in this problem then you can do that but because you have to just find out for one value then you can just directly find out in o of n log n sorry so i'll show you on to the code part now the code will be in the description also so you can check that out code also so this is the like power function in which you have to just calculate a to the power of b that's what i've used in this function so you can use this function i have finding out a to the power of b mod m but because there is no mod m so i have like written down my mod m to a very large number i can also remove down this mod m uh, so it is also fine but i have not like uh, like changed this function this function is always remain same so you can understand how this function is working in my previous videos but it is just like finding out a to the power of b mod m so mod m will decrease down the whole answer mod m but if i put my mod m value very large so it will not decrease down so that's what i've done so it is just like simple uh, finding out a to the power of b and my total is 2 into 4 into like 4 to the power of n minus 3 plus n minus 3 times into 4 into 3 into 3 like power of 4 into n minus 4 times so that's the whole logic for this problem i hope you understand it though if you still have not you can mention in the comment box i'll try to figure out h and every doubt now next problem is it's actually given that you understand the problem but in simple terms it states that you have to find out the last digit of a to the power of b okay so you have to find out a to the power of b but 
like uh, for the last digit but because b is very large you cannot actually find out like you cannot do a to the power of b again and again like you can if you also do like a to the power of b mod some number then that number i will actually change the original number which you are actually finding out and if you the number is not changed how you can find out the last digit i hope you understand my point because in this they are not actually telling us to do a to the power of b mod m but they're just finding out that you just want to find out a to the power of b mod m like such that you not go out of bounds because b is very large but if you do mod m then you you will not be able to find out the last digit so how you can do about this problem now as you can see in this problem you just have to think over that how multiplication is done if you just think over that that if you have two numbers let's assume uh 9 into 9 if you find out that multiplication then the answer will be 81 okay so the one digit like the last digit will always like because you have to always like only find out the last digit what you actually have to do here is see if you want to find out 3 to the power of like 10 this is the first question like the first test case i'll understand you move to test case 3 to the power of 10 okay now 3 to the power of 10 in binary exponential if you do that what you will actually do you just double out the like the base and like divide out the power so it will become like this is actually equivalent to 9 to power of 5 which is like fine again no problem but now as you can see what we are actually doing in finding out or if you just think that if you are finding out 3 to power of 2 what we are actually doing is multiplying 3 into 3 which is 9 which is actually fine no problem but but the main thing in this here is we are taking this number and this number multiplying them and the last digit is always actually the multiplication of these numbers the if you multiply these numbers and mod them with 10 then that number will give you the last digit and that digit will always be the same see if this is 81 9 into 9 is 81 if i again multiply this with 9 and it will turn out to be like something like 9 into 9 is a 70 so this number will comes out to be 9 but what we can actually do here is if we mod 81 with 10 because you actually have to always find out the last digit and also 9 mod 10 and you just multiply both of these numbers so this is 1 this is 9 it is always giving you 9 also so why this is actually giving us because we are taking out the last digit of the number we are multiplying and also the last number of this number we are multiplying if we multiply both of these numbers it will give you the last digit of the resulting number obviously so that's what we are doing when we are multiplying or finding out the binary exponentiation we are actually doing out the same binary exponentiation but when the multiplication part is there what we are doing we will take out the last digit of this number and multiply it and keep on saving that number so that we will not lose track of the last digit and that's what we are doing now it is 9 into 5 so how we do 9 into 5 9 into 5 is actually broken down into 9 into 4 into 9 Okay, so now it's actually like as you can see, this is nine, and you have to do nine into four. Now nine into four is divided down into eighty one two to the power of two. Eighty one to the power of two into nine, and then this is again divided down. So the main thing is the answer will be nine only because nine is actually the 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 other part. So as you can see the The answer is always like nine, but the, the the main thing in this problem is what we're actually doing here is because nine is multiplying with this part, this eighty one something times, okay? And as you can see, this number when like eighty one into eighty one is done, the last digit of that number what you can find out eighty one and eighty one is multiplied, the last digit will be one, and that one will one when we multiply it with nine, the last digit will be nine. I hope you get my point. So that's what we are doing. We actually keep on tracking of the last digit. of always when we do a multiplication we have to keep on track of the last digit we are storing and that's what we are doing in this problem let's move on to the code part now so yeah so this is actually the mod function which we are using but uh, in this problem we are using this mod power 10 this 10 function so this is answer which is actually storing out the last last bit so uh, in, th in this problem we are actually taking the input of a and b okay and this is the answer which is like always initialized with one and then what we are actually doing here is we are just like this is the same mod power function which i have always been using okay the same function but in this what we are doing this, this is a global answer and what we are actually doing here is whenever we are multiplying as you can see whenever this part is done 
whenever we are multiplying my result with this answer i am also doing that that i all multiply this answer with this a value and we are doing the same thing because we have to just multiply this so answer mod 10 a mod 10 into 10 like mod 10 because what we are doing here is which i have told you that i have to find out the last digit of this number answer the current answer last digit the last digit of the number i am multiplying and we just have to store that number because if that like as you can see this number can also go over 10 so i have to always find out the last digit maybe it can happen that this is the last digit can be 2 and 2 into 9 2 into 9 can become 18 but we don't have to store it now 18 18 is not the last digit the last digit is always 8 so we have to also do a mod of that number so that's what i'm doing answer mod 10 a mod 10 again a mod of that and we are always like storing this in answer and we just, whenever we are doing iteration we have to store that in this answer and the rest of the whole code is same so this mod 10 mod power 10 will result out the answer which is same like a to the power of b mod m this will return out the same answer but we, are, we don't have to care about the answer of this we have to care about answer which is this answer which are actually global variable which is storing out the last bit like the last bit i hope you understand the logic and the code part for both the problems if you still have not you can mention now i'll see you next one and stay tuned for more videos keep coding